Three five seven twelve ninety. Good morning. You're on Talk Back. Hello, Cynthia. Hi. Hi, this is Daryl Perry. Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Okay, go Doing ahead. Doing well. I'm glad you called. Uh, I, I'm supposed to be your you guest. You are indeed. You are my guest. Thank you. Our guest, Dick Curran here, is City Councilor David Curran. How are you, Daryl? With us. Doing well. Uh, Great. So. Thanks for calling. All right. First of all, Daryl, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Alabama. And I've moved all over the country over the last uh, 15 years or so. And I moved to Keene. I'm an inhabitant of Keene since April of last year. And I want the government to be as small as possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to ask... I know this is a terrible thing to ask, but you're from Alabama. Where's your where's your regionalism? Well, what do you mean regionalism? Where's your accent? <laughs> I I lost, lost it, it pretty much in college, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people said that I never really had one. But what little accent I did have, I lost in college when I studied broadcasting oh, and okay. had to take some okay. voice classes of how to properly pronounce words and not say y'all. I'll say y'all occasionally, <laughs> and when, when I do, you can definitely tell that I'm from down south. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, yeah, I, I don't really have much of an accent. Well, you really don't. Um, why are you running for school board? I want to give voters another choice. Instead of basically the establishment candidates, there's two incumbents running for re-election, and one of the incumbents is actually a school board member, a city councilor and the state rep. Mm -hmm. So the the voters don't really have a lot of choice. They have the establishment candidates, and now they actually have, I I think there's a total of nine candidates, so I heard a rumor that one of the candidates may be withdrawing from the race. Yes. So, you know, there's eight candidates, so the the voters actually do have a choice now. And I was one of the first candidates to file. Uh, I believe I was actually the second candidate to file. And it was to give voters another choice and to give voters a choice to vote for someone that wants smaller government and a smaller school board. Okay. So what would you, what would you do if you were elected? Would you um, change the makeup of the board, reduce the numbers? Um... When I say a smaller school board, I, I actually mean a smaller school system. To where instead of currently a $62.3 million budget, or if that gets rejected, it goes up to 63 something million. And if you look at the school board reports, they list instructional cost as $33.6 million. And then the other 20 something million dollars of the budget is what they call support cost, which one would think theoretically all of the supports that go into the education system should be self-funding. A library should fund itself. The cafeteria should fund itself. The sporting events, the sports should fund themselves. There shouldn't be taxpayer money going for all of these things to basically supplement the education of children. So I, I believe that we can actually educate children without taxation through the local property tax, which I think right now they're saying they're going to have to increase just the school portion, either 5 or 10%, depending on which budget actually gets passed. And then when you add that to the increase that the city is going to add, and then the state's probably going to wind up adding another increase to that, and Keene already has one of the highest rates of property taxation in the state. And when you look at the increased home values in Keene compared to the cities and towns that have a higher uh, tax rate, Keene has the largest property tax in the state. And we need to do something about that to be able to bring that tax burden down. How do you think that education costs can be lowered in Keene? I think For the having family having user fees to where, like like I said, the library should fund itself. Because I would gladly, and I think that this goes for the public libraries as well, I would gladly pay $1 to borrow a book. 
And there was a study done recently that if everybody that borrowed a book from any library across the country paid a $1 fee for borrowing that book, the libraries would be self-sufficient and not have to rely on either donations or any tax assistance that they get. So something like that, which is a user fee, instead of forcing people that either don't have children in the school system or don't have children at all, instead of forcing them to pay for the system, it should be the people that actually use the system that are paying for it. And when you look at the private schools, they're able to educate children at a much lower cost per child than what the public education system does. I looked at the numbers recently, and based on the $62.3 million proposed budget and the school enrollment, the most recent figures I could find for the entire school, teen school system was, I believe, 3,788 children. And I believe that number is inaccurate because it listed nearly 1,800 kids for the high school, and I know the school board said that that's down to 1,400-something. But let's just go with the 3788 figure that I did find. If you break that down over the total $62.3 million budget, that's nearly $17,000 per child to operate the school system. But if you look at that a little bit further and look just at the instructional cost, then it's 9000 per child just to educate them. So the other 8000 of that goes toward administration and all of these support costs that should be funded, again, through user fees. Yeah, it, um, with the athletic programs, I think they're being forced these days to, uh, to step into the pay-to-play program. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a sign of the economic times, but that's one way. What is... Um, I guess I want to ask you about the restructuring committee. They they went out and worked a couple of years and and then uh, put it up to the voters to uh, to eliminate one of the buildings, one of the schools, and well, and, repurpose, yeah, something. repurposing, yeah, and, and consolidating. Um, you know, what's your take on that? I actually think that consolidating would be a good idea, especially when you look at the declining enrollment. Where I'm from in Birmingham, Alabama, they were having to close schools every couple of years because of declining enrollment. It makes absolutely no sense from a fiscal standpoint to keep the buildings open when you have fewer people using that building. So when the enrollment declines, it only makes sense to eliminate one of the buildings. If there's a way to expand one of the other buildings to accommodate the additional children that would be needed because I'm not advocating like classroom sizes of 50 kids. That just makes absolutely no sense. But to have classroom sizes of say 15 or 20 children and have those in all of the different buildings, you could very easily have classroom sizes of 30 children and eliminate one of the buildings because otherwise it's just fiscally irresponsible to keep a building open when it's not being fully utilized. Thirty five seven twelve ninety. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Good morning. I uh, I don't live in Keene, and so um, I can't vote for you as a as a candidate. But I just wanted to call in and and give you my encouragement and tell you how wonderful it is to hear from someone with your kind of ideas. Don't give up. Uh, to be very honest, I'm sure in this day and age of control by the feelings flock when it comes to school systems and town governments and state governments, you're going to have a hard time. But don't give up because you're exactly what we need to hear and exactly the type of change that needs to happen, and I thank you. Well, thank you for thank calling. You. Do um do you, do you think that cor- they've talked? They're talking about the school board has been talking about eliminating courses um, to save money. Which one? Do you, which ones do you think, if any, are acceptable to uh, eliminate? Well, uh, I like a free market approach to where if the parents aren't enrolling their children in the courses, and I understand that, like the fifth grade level, the parents don't really have a choice of what class to enroll their child in 
whereas at the high school level, and I'm not sure how it is necessarily in Keene, but I know when I was in high school, I actually had the choice of certain classes to enroll myself in. So at more of the high school or junior high level to where you're giving children the choice of picking which class they want, if people aren't enrolled in the class, again, it doesn't make fiscal sense to keep that certain class. But at the same time, it doesn't make sense to offer the class for one year and then take it away and then offer it again for another year and then take it away. So there has to be some sort of consistency. And I understand that the fifth grade level, there's the discussion and actually the board has proposed to eliminate the fifth grade world language. And while I agree that children should learn multiple languages, I don't believe that it's something that should be forced. It should be the option to where if parents want their children in the class, then they should be able to opt their children into the class. And if there's enough people to make it fiscally responsible or fiscally beneficial to have the class, then they should keep the class. But if it's a program that is not being utilized, then it should definitely be eliminated. So, in other words, let me just get this clear. If they're offering, let's say, Spanish, for, for lack of something better, they're offering Spanish in the sixth grade, the parents should be able to opt for whether their child will take that course or not take that course. It should not yes. be just there for uh, I, everybody. I think that parents should have more control over the education of their children than they currently have. Currently, they enroll the child into the school, and then the school says, this is what education your child will get. Parents should have more control and say, this is the education that I want my child to get. And then the school should do their best effort to make sure that the child gets the education that the parent wants the child to get. Okay. Um, how do you feel about a resource officer? Uh, first of all, number one, do you think the resource officer is necessary at the high school? I don't like the idea of having police in the schools. It basically it prepares children for a police state that a lot of people argue we already have, to where basically you have the militarization of the police in a lot of areas. And there's been the big discussion here in Keene over the Bearcat, and that's just one more step in that militarization. And when you get children accustomed to seeing police officers on a daily basis, basically intruding into their lives, then I don't think that's a good thing. When I was in high school, we would have random drug searches where they would lock us in the school rooms and the police would come in with drug dogs. I didn't like that because, it again, it's one of those small little things to where they're just getting kids accustomed to seeing police in everyday life. And I don't think that your average person really wants to deal with police on a daily basis because a lot of the times the cops, all they're doing is making situations worse and arresting people that most of the time have harmed no one. There's a lot of victimless criminals in this country, and not to go off on something that's totally unrelated to just schools, but when the U.S. has only 5% of the world's population but 25% of the world's prisoners, there's something wrong, and I, I just don't think that having police officers involved in a school situation is the right thing to do. So my next question was, you know, should there be resource officers at the middle and elementary schools? And I guess you've already answered that question. So um, uh, let's see. Um, very quickly, what can be done to improve the school district and how should those improvements be paid for? We're going to run out what of money. What can be done to improve the school district? I, I think the first thing that can be done is to give parents more control over the education of their children. And the second thing that can be done to improve the school system is when you have a reduction in the number of students to actually reduce the budget. Okay. Because right now they're saying we have to increase the budget because we have fewer students. And that's right. just, that's completely opposite of logical. We're out of time, Daryl, but thank you very, very thank much you. for being thank here. Thank you for calling. Good luck. And uh, thank good, luck. You. good luck on the election. Thanks. Hey.
And you're listening to Talk Back on the News Station, WKBK 1290 AM and 104.1 FM. We will be back. 